All right. Well, I am so sorry to everybody. And so I wanted to talk to you about the Finn Markstel Pet, um, which is a dog sled race that's held in northern Norway every year. Um, this is me. I'm Dr. Lee Morgan. I'm very good at uh, working with dogs and cats, not so much with computers. <laughs> and I wanted to show you the difference between <laughs> dog sledding and sled dogging. So this is dog sledding. Um, a little bit different from what we're going to be talking about tonight. Is that a dog or is that you? <laughs> <laughs> so this is that's dog sledding, and what I wanted to talk to you tonight a little bit different. We're going to talk about sledding dogs, and there we go with that. And these are sled dogs; they're a whole different breed. Sled dogs love to pull, and as you can see, a lot of the sled dogs are mixed breed, but they are very happy about pulling a sled. Now, usually I'm in the Iditarod, which is in Alaska, and the Iditarod is a thousand mile dog sled race. It starts in Anchorage, it all goes all the way to Nome. We have 26 different uh, points that we are at, and our job as veterinarians is to look at the dogs while they're racing and make sure that they're happy, that they're okay, and that they can go on. One year after the Iditarod, I decided I'd like to go to Norway, and so I did. And I took part as a field veterinarian for the Finn Markstel Pet, which starts in Alta. Alta is a small town. It's in the very northern part of Norway. And the race starts in Alta, goes all the way to Lavahook, Tanenbra, Varenbotten, to Shortkenes, down to Urbrafazvik, up to Naiden, and then back again. It's actually about 1,000 kilometers, so a little bit shorter than the Iditarod. And um, that's pretty good. So this uh, is really fun because this hits on the, all kinds of different parts of uh, the northern Swedish area or northern, northern Scandinavian area, including the northern borders of Finland, Russia, Sweden, and Norway, of course. This is the town of Alta. It's very famous for its church. And the Finn Markstel Pet is a very big event. It's held every year up in uh, northern Norway in March, starts in March. Still very cold there, but we still have good light. And these are the dog sleds. As they are coming down, you can see that the dogs run about, we use about 14 dogs to 16 dogs. And uh, yeah, I did a rod, they use about 16 dogs. At the Finn Markstel Pet, we use. 14 dogs. And so I thought what I'd do is show you a bunch of happy dog pictures <laughs> as I talk. So this guy was one of my favorites. I think the thing that I enjoy most about these races is how much uh, the dogs really enjoy the feet. They are competitive by nature, but there's something about them that really enjoys the cold. And you see it as play more than anything else. I've seen dogs that will rest for five hours and be after running 20 miles and be raring to go. So I flew up to Northern Norway and if any of you have never been there, you know how beautiful, starkly beautiful it is. And this is flying in. What? You can see no, the deep no, ravines no, no. and the forests and the beautiful fjords that cut in through the continent. Of course, the northern lights were in uh, yeah. rare form when I was up there. I tried to take it to a window, but uh, to no avail. The one difference I saw between the veterinarian uh, that were the Iditarod and the Mark Lopet is here's a bunch of guys from the Iditarod. A little long in the tooth, a little gray in the beard, and uh, older, much older. The veterinarians here were much younger. And really more of a global thing. This is Fiora. She was from uh, Spain. Uh, this was, I'm trying to get all these names right. This was um, P. 
Kia, and she was from France, and then uh, Lynn, who was actually Norwegian. Uh, here we are, um, beautiful scenery, uh, beautiful people. Um, one of the things that we did as veterinarians, of course, is to introduce ourselves to the animals. And prior to the race, it was very important that we got together with the mushers, with the teams, and did a pre-check of the dog. We want to make sure that they're healthy to start and that there's no one obviously sick. So everybody goes through a pre-check about two or three days prior to the event. This was Tuva. Tuva and I uh, went, uh, was on my team. I was on a team of three veterinarians that was, was at a different checkpoint every night almost. This is Lynn, uh, another very good veterinarian. This is Jorge on my left, or on my right side. He was from Spain. It was a lot of fun and with Lynn. Uh, this guy is George. He was from Germany. He looks to me a lot like George Clooney. In fact, he, won, he, he gave me a secret that I would swear to tell nobody, so I'll tell it to you now. Uh, he was a male model <laughs> from uh, Germany, so I'm not supposed to say that. So that's why I wanted to say that at this meeting. This was my favorite guy. Um, this is Pogs. Pars is uh, native to northern Norway. Um, I'm not a man. Most people here are not men. He's a man. Trust me. <laughs> he is a he's a good guy, and he was pretty tough as tough as wolves. And the leader of this pack is Ari, and Ari is an amazing veterinarian who every year puts this thing together, and every year makes sure the dogs are safe. He's very busy, and you can always see with his cell phone. I think we forget that in the old days, the dog sled was the only way to get through in Arctic areas. There were a lot of not, there were not train tracks in these areas of the country. There was very little shipping. Aviation was very much in its infancy and not reliable at all. This is Joe Reddington. He is the father of the modern Iditarod. He wanted to do something to celebrate Alaska's centennial, and he wanted to do something of epic proportion. He thought of a race that would start in Nome and travel part of the Iditarod would go through the Serum Run. And if you remember, this is when the dogs, Balto and his team, brought life-saving uh, anti-toxin to the town of Nome and saved the, the team, or excuse me, saved the whole community, really. He's an interesting guy. He actually took a uh, dog sled team to the top of Mount McKinley. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into running a dog sled race of this caliber. A lot of times, it's in the Iditarod and in the Finn Marco Pet, we ship the food and all the stores to the checkpoint beforehand. This includes hay for the dogs to sleep in. At the Iditarod, there's only one way to get in and out, and that's with the ski plane. So we ship it up weeks beforehand. We also check the dogs again uh, to make sure they're okay. We have a raffle before the beginning of the race to decide who win, who the starting positions. The race course is staked out, and this is very similar for the Finn Marco Pet. They go through the same uh, regime. At the beginning, the dogs come in, uh, snow is plowed. The dogs are checked with a microscope, microchip scanner to make sure these are the dogs that they say they are. We always want to make sure there's no Dinky dinky things. Then off the dogs go. And I love this shot because I think it shows the sheer exuberance of the dogs as they get ready and they go. And of course, the crowds, the throngs of people. This is in Anchorage, but the same thing occurs in Nome, or excuse me, in um, northern Norway, in Ulta. These are one of the dogs that what it looks like from the air as they come into the checkpoint. Uh, at the Iditarod and also at the Finn Marshall Pet, you can see that the teams are rather close together at the beginning stages of the race. That makes a lot of work for the veterinary team. So as they come into what we call the parking lot, we have to go through each and every one of these dogs. And each and every one of them, we have to make sure that they are they're okay to uh, travel forward. 
If we find that one of the dogs is sick or injured, we will immediately drop them from the race to prevent any further uh, harm to the animals that they don't really injure themselves badly. And it's amazing to me, both in the Iditarod and in the Tim Marshall pet, how much vested the mushers are in with their dogs. So a team of our veterinarians will get together with the dogs and we will listen to their hearts, we'll listen to their lungs, we'll make sure they look good. And uh, it's a good time for the dogs to stretch. If they all look good, then we'll sign off on it. We'll put our signature here and then we have the mushers put their signature and they have to present this at the end of the race to show that each of their dogs that finished was okay to keep going. The, all the information is transmitted to a, a headquarters and posted up. The media is always involved. And uh, this is me just checking the dogs at one of the stops. Another veterinarian checking the dog. We also look at gum color. Uh, we want to make sure that they're not overexerting themselves. So Dr. Morgan, as this dog says, what is the difference between the Iditarod and the Pinmaclopet? Well, in the Iditarod, we really are limited by where we can go with an airplane uh, and how much we can take with an airplane. These are dropped dogs. They're done for the race and they need to go back to Anchorage where they will wait for their humans to get back and they'll take a rest. Most of the dogs, the dogs are just tired. Um, there's very, there's a small amount of orthopedic injuries. Anything more serious than that gets, uh, they, they take out very uh, quickly. And thus we have a really amazing safety record. But this is it. This is how we get to and from where we're going. Good old bush playing series with speed. And it can get quite crowded in these bush planes. Uh, the dogs enjoy looking out the windows a lot of times. You can see this one up here in the corner so it's enjoying seeing the view. The Finmarco pet's a little bit different because there's the E6, a highway that follows the route all the way through northern Norway. And so the teams have their own team, backup team, that follows along in these vans. And this is really good because when you're driving along like this and there's these roads, which are pretty clear, I thought, if we have an injured dog, we just give it to, or a tired dog or an orthopedic, or we just decide to take them out of the race for whatever reason, we can just hand it off to the person in the van. They have their own people, specialists, they have their own veterinarians on call. And it's a much, I thought, much smoother operation because they do have a backup team for us. So we don't really have to care for the injured dogs night after night and night. We can give them off. And I think that that helps. The Mark Lupin has never had a serious injury, which is a remarkable, remarkable considering the long range of train. But in Ulta, the, um, it is a big festivity. And the beautiful night before the these whole ice gardens, everything lit up, these ice sculptures. They had a play that I thought was really beautiful. It was all in Norwegian and it was a little hard to follow, but basically talks about this play was about his, this man who's lost his lover and is trying to get back to see her. At the end, the athletes are, or excuse me, the mushers are introduced and uh, they have a procession much like the Olympics. Um, just for dogs. <laughs> but um, the dogs then are led to the beginning of the race, and the Finn Marshall pet starts in downtown Alta. It's a big day for everybody. The people will line the streets and they be able to give their favorite mushers and their favorite dogs a high five. Again, I, I just draw on to the smiles that the dogs exude as they race through the streets. You notice the booties that the dogs wear. Now this is to protect them against the ice and snow that gets up in between the crevices. They have very furry paws and sometimes they can get little ice balls in there. Susan Butcher first started doing this in the 1980s and was kind of laughed at. Now everybody does it. They laughed at her until she won like six I did rods in a row and then they stopped laughing. 
this is some of the terrain that the dogs will encounter. A lot of times they'll run on um, river bottoms and nice and smooth. Our first stop here was up on um, was a small town of Leverhook, and it was still quite early in the day, and the dogs were not quite that tired yet. We got some nice pictures. They looked pretty well rested. They looked really good. Uh, um, and then once they were checked in and we made sure they were okay, off on the riverbed they would go to the next checkpoint. You can see the beautiful rolling hills of this environment in this country. Um, every dog is, when we park them, we like to park the teams far enough apart that they're not getting entangled with each other. Uh, the dogs are competitive and there's been many times that they get too close. It's almost like two NFL teams getting too close and they, uh, they can make quite a racket. In the idea of the rod, we sleep outside a lot. So at negative 20 degrees, uh, negative 10 degrees, we're sleeping in these little tents uh, with supposedly a heater. We always go out about three or four in the morning. You can see we tried to keep, all, uh, we keep all our gear on even when we're inside. And the Finmark Lopez was really nice. They had uh, places where we could stay, hotels with beds and warm water. And it was quite, it was like staying at the Hilton. Uh, these are Tuva and uh, I think Pia there. Um, we're at, at one of the checkpoints. One of the things I love <laughs> about the Finmark Lopez is somebody put in the team of Malamutes. The Malamutes were my favorite dogs. Malamutes are big huskies. They're big and they're very slow. So a lot of times we would be at the checkpoint, everybody would be gone, but we couldn't go because the Malamute team was making its way slowly to the checkpoint. When we talked to the monster, he said, well, the dogs wanted to take a few naps before they came here. So I don't think they had quite the competitive spirit of some of these other dogs. I love the fact that the dogs love people. They love, they're used to being handled by people. They love, it's very easy to examine them. They're not vicious by any stretch of the imagination. Got to see some reindeer up there. Uh, actually ate some reindeer up there. So there they are. And it was kind of amazing to see those guys. Uh, again, as evening draws, we are back on the road. We go back to the Finmarkster pet and follow the road as the dogs follow the road. Each town they would come into, people would line up to see them. And the dogs took it all in stride, <clears throat> taking a nice nap. Um, this is again one of the mushers. And I, I think I like to show this because it shows the bond that the mushers have for their dogs. They truly love them and the dogs love them back. And this is a team sport. It's a human and dog together. This is a photo of one of the guys who was a very young musher. His dog had pulled up pretty lame. And he was very concerned about her. We dropped her from the race and he wrote me afterwards saying how thankful he was that we were there and that the dog was doing well. I love how he, you can just tell, I think the picture tells a thousand words, the expression he has, the dog. Uh, they truly care for their animals. And that was his trailer. So all we had to do is really give the dogs to the handlers in the trailer. And they have a veterinarian on call that they can take them to. This is more of us checking the dogs as we would go. We always tried to keep bright colors on so that people could see us if it was night or if it was dark. One of the places we went was Shurkinus. It's all the way by uh, Moscow, or all the way by uh, the Russian border. It was famous because Shurkinus was the most bombed city in World War II. And this was a monument to that sacrifice that they had. They were bombed both by the Allies in the beginning of the war and by the Germans towards the later parts of the war. They had set up a nice hotel in back, which I thought I'd read about but never seen. These are actually kind of gimmicky. They're, they're, they're not as, uh, I thought they were kind of out in the middle of nowhere. In fact, this is in the parking lot of Marriott. 
the dogs came in at night um, to shorten this. Again, they have to be checked in. I actually think this was a shot taken in Alaska, but I wanted to show that, you know, the, the dogs go 24-7 uh, after their rest. After their rest, they're not concerned about the time of day for us. If they tired, they sleep. When they're done sleeping, then they go. It makes doing a physical exam kind of challenging, especially when it's like three or four in the morning and you're tired yourself, you've been up all day, but it's important to be really focused. And so there's a lot of camaraderie amongst the veterinarians and everyone trying to do their share because we know it's just as tough for the other person as it is for you. There's my favorite Malamutes. <laughs> they're in no hurry and they're ready to go. Uh, it's me with the Malamute. And there's what we would do is sleep when we could. The bars is grabbing some shut eye uh, as we travel in three hours to the next uh, checkpoint. Where we would again check the dog, checking their heart, checking their gum, checking their breathing, and checking their orthopedia. The wind got up there a couple times. We had some pretty wind storms. Uh, bad windstorms up there. We come down to the valleys, to the fjords, we pick up the dry snow. Uh, again, us checking the dogs. The, this is in actually um, Alaska, but the territory, the terrain is much like that in northern Norway. We had a lot of windstorms, a lot of snowstorms up there. This is the dogs that decided that they wanted to keep going even if their musher had not. He'd fallen off back here. You don't see the picture of him on the sled because in fact, he's back here somewhere. The dogs decided to keep going with him or without him. So they want to go <laughs> even if he's not there. And he had to run after him. We couldn't help, we're not allowed to help. It was made for a hilarious picture as he tried to chase his team down. <laughs> Everywhere is a party, everywhere we'd stop. This is a band at play. I like the music. You know, up on the road we were again. This is again leaving uh, short tennis. One of the things I want to bring up is this is the home of the Sami people. Uh, they are indigenous people, much like the Inuit of Alaska. They still stay in these communal tents a lot of time. Um, and you'll see these when you go to Norway. Uh, upper Sweden and Finland. This was, uh, the, I think the gestures of the people in the crowd were amazing. We were supposed to stay in a crappy little hotel. He, he invited us into his home. The beautiful plate glass windows looking out over the train and on the dog. So we were really close to the dog and we could go up the hill and warm up if we needed to. You can see there's a hospital held here, St. Coots Hospital, and the checkpoint. This guy decided that he was done running and he would just drive himself back to the beginning. And the race finally all goes all the way back to where we started, Alta. So I wanted to thank my son, which you guys heard, as I was very frustratingly trying to put this up and my wife who puts up with me in my hygiene and allows me to do all this. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary. And sometimes you get to marry the woman of your dreams. And that's the Finn Mark School Pack. So again, that, that's my story. I am so sorry about not being able to hit the right things. And uh, that, that's all I have. <laughs> hey, Lee. Yeah. I have a couple questions. 